At this point, I don't get what Joey's plan is for this company. The animation sure aren't being finished on time anymore, and I certainly don't see why we need this machine. It's noisy, it's messy, and who needs that much ink anyway? Also, get this. Joey had me to with donating something from our workstation. We put them on these little pedestals in the break room to help appease the gods, Joey said. Keep things going. I think he's lost his mind, but hey, he writes the checks. But I tell you what, if one more of these pipes bursts, I'm out of here. It's dark and it's cold, and it's stuck in behind every single wall. In some places, I swear this conversation ink is clear up to my knees. Whoever thought that these crummy pipes could hold up under this kind of strain? Either know something about pressure I don't, or he's some kind of idiot. But the real worst part about all of this are the noises the system makes, like a dying dog in its last legs. Make no mistake, this place, this machine, and this whole darn thing, it just isn't natural. You can bet, I won't be doing any more repair jobs for Mr. Joey Drew. Tears from the shadows to rain his sweet blessings upon me. The figure of ink that shines in the darkness. I see you, my savior. I pray you hear me. Those old songs, yes, I still sing them. For I know you are coming to save me, and I will be swept into your final loving embrace. But love requires sacrifice. Can I get an amen? So first, Joey installs this ink machine over our heads. Then it begins to leak. Three times last month, we couldn't even get out of our department because the ink had flooded the stairwell. Joey's solution. An ink pump to drain it periodically. Now I have this ugly pump switch right in my office. People in and out all day. Thanks, Joey. Just what I needed. More distractions. These stupid cartoon songs don't write themselves, you know. So I was going to get my dustpan from the hall closet the other day, and guess what? I can't find my stupid key. It's like they disappeared in the thin air or something. All I can think of is that they must have fallen in one of the garbage cans that I was making my rounds last week. I just hope nobody tells Sammy. Because if he finds out I lost my keys again, I'm out of here. Every day the same strange thing happens. I'll be up here in my booth, the band will be swinging, and suddenly Sammy Lawrence just comes marching in and shuts the whole thing down. Tells us all to wait in the hall. Then I hear him. He starts up my projector and he dashes from the projection booth and down to the recording studio like the little devil himself was chasing behind. A few seconds later, the projector turns on. But Sammy, oh no, he don't come out for a long time. This man is weird. Crazy weird. I've got half a mind to talk to Mr. Drew about all this. I really do. Then again, I have to admit, Mr. Drew's got his own peculiarities. Every artistic person needs a sanctuary. Joey Drew has his, and I've got mine. To enter, you need only know my favorite song. The drum thunders in triumph. The piano delicately calls. The piano returns in graceful harmony. The banjo playfully plucks. Sing my song, and my sanctuary will open to you. I love the quiet, and that's hard to come by in these busy times. And yeah, sure, it, it may stink to high heaven down here, but it's just perfect for an old lyricist like me. Sammy's songs always got some bounce, but uh, if I didn't get away once in a while, they'd never have any words to go with them. So I'll keep my mind to singing, and uh, my nose closed. It may only be my second month working for Joey Drew, but I can already tell I'm going to love it here. People really seem to enjoy my Alice Angel voice. Sammy says she may be as popular as Bendy someday. These past few weeks, I voiced everything from talking chairs to dancing chickens, but this is the first character I've really felt a connection with. She's a part of me. Alice and I, we're going places. I don't be seeing what the big deal is. 
So what if I went and painted some of those bendy dolls with a crooked smile? That's sure no reason for Mr. Drew to be playing off the handle at me. And if he really wants to be so helpful, he could be telling me what I'm to be doing with this warehouse I got full of that angel watch my call it. Not a scrap of that mess be said. You'd probably have to melt it all down to be rid of it all. There's nothing wrong with dreaming. Wishing for the impossible is just human nature. That's how I got started. Just a pencil and a dream. We all want everything without even having to lift a finger. They said you just have to believe. Believe can make you succeed. Believe can make you rich. Believe can make you powerful. Why, with enough belief, you can even cheat death itself. Now that is a beautiful and positively silly thought. Everything feels like it's coming apart. But I walked into their recording booth today. Sammy was there with that Allison. Apparently, I didn't get the memo. Alice Angel will now be voiced by Miss Alice Pendle. A part of me died when he said that. There's got to be a way to fix it. All right, let's go over this again. If the pressure goes over 45, I screw the safety bolt and tie it up, right? No, for the last time you do that, you blow every pipe in this place. If it reaches 45, you unhook the safety switch. You sure? You know, this sounds harder than comparing earwax to beeswax. Look, it's not that difficult. Just keep an eye on the cage. Look, pal, if you think I'm doing my job and yours, I'm out of here. These blasted elevators. Sometimes they open, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come, and sometimes they keep on going to hell and back. I keep telling these people, if Mr. Joey Drew keeps cutting corners like this, someone's sure to end up falling to their death. And it sure ain't gonna be me. I'm taking the stairs. Who would have thought? Me, having lunch with Joey Drew. Apparently times are tougher than I thought. For a moment there, I thought I'd be stuck with the check. But I gotta say, he wasn't at all what I expected. Quite the charmer. He even called me Alice. I liked it. I don't get it. Everyone's walking around here like Grandma just died. Nothing but angry faces everywhere. These people gotta lighten up. I mean, hello, you make cartoons. Your job is to make people laugh. I'm telling you. little people anything. Oh, sure. According to him, there's always big stuff coming. Adventure and fame and the like. But, uh, I'm the guy, see, who has to make sure our budgets don't go all out of whack just because the genius upstairs went out and got himself another idea. And speaking of which, and this is top secret, apparently Mr. Drew has another large project in mind now. And it ain't gonna be cheap. No, I'm not looking for trouble. It's just the nature of us projectionists to seek out the dark places. You see, I've learned the ins and outs of this here studio. I know how to avoid being bothered by the likes of this company. That projectionist they always say, creeping around, he's just looking for trouble. Well, trouble or not, I sees everything. They don't even know when I'm watching. Even when I'm right behind them. Only two weeks into this company, and already it's gotten interesting. Joey is a man of ideas. And only ideas. When I agreed to start this whole thing with him, I thought there'd be a little more give and take. Instead, I give, and he takes. I haven't even seen Linda for days now. Still, someone has to make this happen. When in doubt, just keep drawing Henry. On the plus side, I've got a new character that I think people are gonna love. They told me I was perfect for the role. Absolutely perfect. Now Joey's going around, 
saying things behind closed doors. I can always tell. Now he wants to meet again tomorrow, says he has an opportunity for me. I'll hear him out. But if that smooth talker thinks he can double cross an angel and get away with it, <laughs> well, oh, he's got another thing coming. Alice? Ooh, she doesn't like liars. For 40 years, I've built attractions that stagger the imagination. Colossal wonders such as the world has never seen. I have earned my legacy with sweat. Right in front of everyone. High-level investors, Wall Street tycoons. The ever-tactless Joey Drew introduces me, the great Bertram Piedmont, as Bertie, like I was his child. You may be paying me, Mr. Drew, but you don't own me. I'll build you a park bigger than anything you could ever possibly conceive. But before you go taking any bows, Mr. Drew, know that this grand achievement will belong to me, and to me alone. These guys down the warehouse get to play games all day while I'm stuck cleaning up after them. They keep locking themselves out of their own back room. So I said it to a look guy that says, you're smart, right? He has an idea. Why not wait these games to knock open the door if you win? It'll be fun for you guys, and it saves me the trip down here every day. They win for it like a dog to pop ropes. I tell ya, if these guys don't start realizing who the real genius is, I'm out of here. The only thing that works around here is my ulcer. Half these people don't know a wrench from a dang steamroller. Bunch of morons is what they are. Spend their day in the warehouse arguing over who's supposed to be doing what and playing them silly games. Still, I'm not complaining. I get most of my dime to myself. Suits me just fine. Only thing that bothers me is that mechanical demon in the corner. Bertram's been working on it for a month now. Says it'll walk someday and maybe dance. All it does now is give me the creeps. I swear, when my back's turned, that thing's moving. <laughs> the biggest park ever built. A centerfold of attractions. Each one more grand than the one before it. It makes my eyes come to tears at the thought. But then, Mr. Drew, for all your talk of dreams, you are the true architect behind so many nightmares. I built this park. It was to be a masterpiece. My masterpiece. And now you think you can just throw me out? Trample me to the dust and forget me? No! This is my park! My glory! You may think I
I don't know. There's just something unworldly about him. So it turns out it's my lucky day. I got to clean in some of the offices around 2 a.m. last night. And what do you think I find on one of the chairs? A big freaking chocolate cake just sitting there, practically yelling my name. You know, I work hard. I earn my pay every darn dollar. But you know what this company's missing? Little better fitting points. And this here cake, it's a point. Hopefully no one finds out what I've done. Because if they did, I can tell you what would happen. I'm out of here. A small memo to all administration offices. Rumors have begun to fly that we simply can't tolerate any longer. The idea that the company is in some form of financial difficulty is untrue. And a slanderous lie against it. It's also been known to me that some backroom incompetents are not trusting in my leadership. As a leader, I'm always steering the boat, guiding our destiny, looking at the big picture. No need for you people to worry about such complicated things. Just do whatever it is you do and trust your leader, which is me. Listen, Tommy, I know you boys over at Jen are doing your best, but I'm paying for living attractions. Not weird abominations. Whatever that grinning thing was I saw wandering around your office, you better keep it locked up tight. I realize it was a first attempt, but imagine if the press caught sight of it. Might scare off investors. And in response to your previous memo, if you claim that your failures are because these things are soulless, then damn it, we'll give them a soul. After all, I own thousands of them. I know how much this part means to you, Susie. Alice means a lot to me, too. Gosh, all of my characters do. In fact, I'll let you in on a little secret. I, too, really believe my characters are more than just drawings. They're alive. They're part of us. And I want people to know them as well as I do. I want people to be able to shake their hand, spend an afternoon with them, love them. Susie, I'll be straight with you. I'm putting together a small project, a little ceremony. Works. A lot of dreams will come true. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to bring Alice to life once again. What do you say? It's simply awe-inspiring what one can accomplish with their own hands. A lump of clay can turn to me if you strangle it with enough enthusiasm. Look what we've built. We created life itself, Henry. Not just on a silver screen, but in the hearts of those we entertain with our fancy moving pictures. But when the tickets stopped selling, when the next big thing came along, only the monsters remained. Shadows of the past. But you can save them, Henry. You can peel it all away. You see, there's only one thing Bindi has never known. He was there for his beginning. But he's never seen the end. The end.